to make Jacksonville a better place to live. The I-Team. Tonight, a warning to drivers about flying debris. We were shocked to find so many cars and trucks on our local roads that are dangerously overloaded. One gust of wind like this can send a mattress flying at you. One wrong turn can topple this load right on top of your car or cause you to swerve and hit something. This care carelessness can seriously hurt or even kill others on the road. The I-Team's Jennifer Waugh shows us more stunning images. It is the kind of sight that should make other drivers nervous. This overloaded truck driving through traffic on Prudential Drive. And look at this minivan with two mattresses stacked on top crossing the hard bridge. Just a few pieces of string keeping them from flying off and they're not even tied down. The string is closed in the door jam. Check out this SUV on Beach Boulevard crossing the Intracoastal Waterway. That box spring has just one piece of string holding it in place. And if you look closely, you can see the driver is holding it with his hand through the sunroof to prevent it from sliding off. We spotted this van on Mayport Road hauling a mattress on top of two box springs. Look at that. There's only one piece of rope holding them on the roof. These kinds of risks can be deadly. Watch what happens when a mattress flies onto this road. A tanker swerves to miss it, flips over, and bursts into flames. The driver is killed. Mattresses turn into flying debris a lot. Ladders are close second. Out of nowhere, I just see the car in front of me just veer to the right and cut the other car off and I'm like what why and then suddenly I just see a ladder in the middle of the road. It happened when News for Jack's and photographer I Fernanda Ponce go, was crossing the Intracoastal on JTB. There was nowhere I could go I just had to run over it and my tire popped and honestly like everything flashed like my whole life flashed in my in my brain while while that was happening and I, I was like my god I'm gonna die. The ladder caused several hundreds of dollars of damage to her car and she was lucky. The driver of this pickup was not. He and his passenger died when the truck flipped over the side of the Buckman Bridge after swerving to avoid hitting a ladder that had fallen off another pickup. And this is what happened when a piece of lumber fell out of a truck and hit a car. Watch this. A wrench flies off a semi and hits this SUV busting the passenger side of the front windshield. Fortunately, no one was sitting there, but yet another close call. Day after day, we find local drivers making poor decisions when hauling or moving. We see only one piece of rope holding all this furniture in the back of this pickup on I-95. This truck is on State Road 312 in St. Augustine. It's going about 50 miles per hour. The lumber is not strapped down and could fly out. And look at all that stuff blowing in the wind. We couldn't believe it when we spotted this pickup driving down Emerson Avenue. The trailer and bed of the truck are overflowing with all sorts of metal. It looks like one sharp turn or hard stop would send parts of it into the road. And look at that large metal yard tool sticking out the left side. It is clearly a hazard to other cars. We watch as it drives for miles, slowly inching up the Hart Bridge, then along MLK Boulevard, weaving through roads on the east side until it finally pulls into a scrap yard. Hey guys, I'm Jennifer with Channel 4. We're not identifying the driver. You've got a lot of stuff here and it's not real safe. Have you noticed that, that, that what if this stuff falls out? It's all strapped down. But but you're driving on the road and how is this strapped down? I don't even see any straps. You see these dumb okay. They're Excuse all right me, what there. What did you just say to me? I said right here. But did you just curse at me? No. Okay. So you you so you feel confident Would you that just leave me alone. We showed this video to a trooper with the Florida Highway Patrol. He says every single piece of metal stacked on top would need to be strapped down for this to be legal, which does not appear to be the case. And this long piece sticking out the left side, that's a violation too. But I am You're concerned rude. about what You're can rude. happen. You're a rude woman. How am I being rude? I'm just asking just you honest questions. You I'm a driver alone? who shares the will, road will you and alone? I watched you just drive you over a bridge with that. I look at all these straps. Okay, did you see this thing see sticking out straps? that is sharp on the other side of your of your trailer? He walks away. 
Now, here's what the law states. Nothing is allowed to stick out of the left side of your car beyond the left bumper. The right side is different, though. As long as it's not more than six inches from the right bumper, then it is legal. Now, if you plan to move anything, state statute requires lock chains or nylon straps like this one, which we bought for just $13 at a local hardware store. Now, keep in mind, if something falls out of your car while you're moving, like if it had happened in this case, a ticket will cost you at least $150 not to mention what could happen to you if someone is hurt. Jennifer Watt, Channel 4, The Local Station. Now, tonight at 11, wait till you see what's been left in the middle of the road for drivers who have no idea until it's too late. We also have the six roadways where you're most likely to see debris blocking lanes or flying out of trucks in front of you. Plus, how much all of this is costing you, the taxpayer? Our I-Team investigation, Dangerous Debris, continues tonight at 11. And if you go to news4jax.com, right on the homepage, you'll find a link to an interactive map to see pictures of all kinds of dangerous debris that's fallen on the roadway. You can also watch the full video as Jen confronts that driver whose truck was overloaded. That's right now on news4jax.com. You know, it's truly a reminder to always be aware of what's ahead on the road. If, if you can, it, we log a lot of miles on local roads just going to and from work every day. And it still shocks me that I actually witnessed a young man run right into traffic on San Jose Boulevard and yeah. get hit by a startled driver right in front of me. Remember that? Yes. I mean, he was thrown over the car, sum somersaulted up in the air and landed in the gutter just feet from me. He somehow survived. You know, since Barry and I drive at night, we're on the road after dark, obviously. It is also troubling how many bike riders, pedestrians, mm -hmm. and even joggers we see out at night, and they're in dark clothing, seemingly oblivious to how dangerous that is, not realizing how difficult it is for drivers to see them. If they just wear a white shirt or a white jacket, what a difference that would make. And maybe use a crossing. Go to the actual crossing to cross the street. And don't forget to see Jen's piece tonight at 11.